This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. This video will derive the sum and difference angle formulas, and we're going to do it in four sections. So the first section, we're going to talk about what those formulas are. The second section, we're going to take a look at some right triangle relationships. In the third section, we're going to get to the proof. And then in the fourth uh, section, I'm going to extend it so we can actually see where all the formulas come from. All right, let's get started. So these are the two formulas that we're going to be uh, looking at, and I'm actually going to be proving them and uh, showing you where they come from. Uh, first thing you have to realize is that you're going to have to memorize these things if you're in a trig class or taking trig uh, related content. And it's uh, fairly easy to memorize because the sum in, in difference formula for sine is if you just read it, it's sine, cosine, cosine, sine. If you look at the relationship for cosine, it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And the best way to memorize this is to say that a few times and to hear it. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. All right, enough of that. Let's <laughs> talk about the next section and, and move on. In a moment, actually the next section, we're going to talk about that proof. And in order to understand that proof, you have to understand some relationships with right triangles. So let's say we have a right triangle. And in this right triangle, we have these distances. Okay, so imagine these distances. And uh, we're going to take the cosine. So if I were to take the cosine of this angle, theta, we're going to get adjacent over hypotenuse. If we do the sine of theta, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so we've got our relationships written down. If we were to imagine these as being proportions, we could cross multiply. So x times 1 is x. I know r times the cosine of theta is r cosine theta. I know that r times the sine of theta is r sine of theta. And y times 1 is 1. All right, so what does this mean? This means that if you want the side adjacent to a uh, right triangle, you just have to multiply the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. If you want this opposite side of a triangle, all you have to do is multiply the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. Uh, okay, so that's how you get these adjacent sides. So this would be the adjacent side and this would be the opposite side. Okay, so now the following proof will make a lot more sense. Imagine starting with a right triangle, and let's say this is alpha. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another right triangle in this picture. And here it is. Okay, and let's say that this angle right here is beta. Okay, so also let's assume that this hypotenuse of this triangle with beta in it has a hypotenuse of one. Okay, so what are now these segments, its legs? So if this is beta, then I know that this side right here, since it's the adjacent side, it's the cosine of beta. All right, so what's this side? This side is opposite, so it's gotta be sine. It's got to be the sine of beta. All right, so now let's take a look at this triangle. Now, to get this one, we got to use this hypotenuse. So it's always going to be the hypotenuse times the sine or the cosine of the alpha to get its sides. So if this is the cosine of beta and this is the adjacent side, this has to be the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. Since this is the opposite side, it's got to be the um, hypotenuse, cosine of beta, 
times the sine of the angle, which is alpha. Okay, so there you go. So, so far we've got all the sides of all the segments that are shown. Okay, what I want to do is I'm going to extend this segment. So this segment, I'm just going to extend up. I'm going to extend up a segment here. And I'm going to assume that this is a right um, angle. Okay, so in other words, this segment going up, and sorry, it's a little bit off, it's <laughs> crooked, but uh, here I've got a right angle. So this segment that I'm building is perpendicular to this one. And I'm going to keep drawing it up until I reach a certain height. And this one's going to be drawn up until I reach a certain height because I want to build a perpendicular off of that right segment. And this line, well, it's a segment, but I want to make sure that these two segments are, of course, perpendicular to this new one. In other words, I've got a giant rectangle in this drawing. Okay, it's not a perfect drawing, but it's going to have to work. Okay, so let's talk about some angles. Like, for instance, this angle down here has got to be alpha plus beta. And since these two lines um, are both perpendicular to the same line, they must be parallel. Okay, that means these two top and bottom lines must be parallel to each other. If they are parallel, then this angle, which is an alternate interior angle with this transversal, has to be um, an alternate interior angle with this, and therefore they're congruent. That means this angle right here also has to be alpha plus beta. Okay, so now that we have that this, alpha, this angle is alpha plus beta, I can now get its sides. So this side over here is opposite, so it's got to be the sine of the angle alpha plus beta. Okay, now, sorry, this is a little choppy because I have a lot of applications open, but... Uh, this segment right here, what is it? Well, since it's the adjacent side, it's cosine. So it is the cosine of alpha plus beta. All right, now the only thing I'm missing are the sides right here on this uh, triangle. So I have to talk about those. All right, well, to talk about those, I need the angles. So let's now talk about uh, let's see if I could use a different color. Let's talk about this angle right here. Okay, what is that angle? Well, if this angle here is 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees, all three of those angles have to add up to be, of course, 180. So this angle right here has to be 90. Take away alpha. Okay, so that angle right there has got to be 90 minus alpha. So if I add up all three angles, they'll all add up, have a sum of 180. Okay, now that's going to help me find out what this angle is right here. Because um, these three angles all have to add up to be 180, right? This angle here, this angle, this right angle here, and this angle all add up to be 180. They have to. Okay, so that means this 90 minus alpha, maybe I can write it over here, the 90 minus alpha, uh, let's see, the 90 degrees, and this unknown angle all have to add up to be 180 because this is a straight line, right? Or just a line, and so they all, a straight angle, that is. So they all have to add up to be 180. So the question is, what is it? What does it have to be? Well, let's see, I got 90 plus 90 is 180. I'm just figuring out, well, I have to add something so this uh, negative alpha cancels. So it's gotta be positive alpha. Now, all three of these angles, when I add them all together, I'll equal 180. So that angle right there also is angle alpha. Right there. Okay, it's angle alpha. So in other words, it's congruent to this angle. Okay, well, we can now use this alpha to find its sides. Okay, so of course I'm going to take the sine of B, which is the hypotenuse, um, times the cosine Let's see, times the cosine, I guess I should write this down. So here's the hypotenuse, all right, times the cosine of the angle. Why cosine? Because it's the adjacent side. See, this is the opposite side. 
So it's going to be the hypotenuse sine of beta times the cosine of the, uh, sorry, times the sine of the angle. Oops, wasn't paying attention there. Times the sine, because it's the opposite side, sine of the angle. Okay, all right, Woo. spent a lot of time trying to get this to be right and trying to be accurate about it at the same time and quick. All right, now what you should notice is that this is a giant rectangle. Well, if it is a rectangle, then we know that the opposite sides have to be congruent. All right, so that means the cosine of beta cosine alpha is got to be equal to the sum of these two sides. So this plus this. So if I add those two guys together, it's got to be equal to this. All right, now that means if you could follow along, and if I could write small, I'm going to try to do this right over here. That means the cosine of alpha plus beta um, it's got to be, you know what, let's not do it all in one step, plus the sine beta uh, sine alpha. This sum is got to be equal to the cosine beta cosine uh, alpha. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I could get rid of this. I could move this term over to the other side and I'll have the relationship that I wanted to prove, which is the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine cosine, right? Cosine beta cosine alpha minus sine beta sine alpha. Okay, so I now have that relationship. Maybe I could write it right here. So now I have the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to this guy, which I'm going to put cosine alpha cosine beta. I can multiply in any order. And I'm going to subtract this to the other side. So, and I'm also going to write the sine first. So it's sine alpha um, sine alpha sine beta. Okay, and then there you go. You can see that relationship for the cosine. Okay, likewise, I can look at over here on the left side. That has to be equal to the sum of these two sides because it's a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent. All right, and that one's easy to see. You get the, got the sine of alpha plus beta. It's real choppy today. Too many applications open. Okay, and that means it's going to be the sum of these two sides. So it's going to be... I'm going to switch these two guys around. Sine alpha cosine beta and this guy. And I'm going to put the cosine first. I can multiply in any order. Okay, so I got sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine cosine cosine sine. Whew! Okay, there you go. All right, let's get to the next section. All right, so from the other section, we had uh, these relationships. Uh, now, we have not thoroughly shown the full uh, relationship yet because there's another uh, option. What if there's a minus? So what I want to do is imagine, just for a moment, if I replaced beta... Just imagine this. I'm going to replace the beta with negative beta. Okay, so what would this formula look like? All right, so alpha stays the same. Okay, so this now, instead of beta, it's going to be negative beta. Okay, so moving forward, alpha stays the same. And now this is negative beta. All right, well, you have to know some relationships to kind of understand this. All right, so obviously this is now just negative beta or alpha minus beta. Well, if you're taking the cosine of the opposite of beta, it turns out that that is the same thing as the cosine of beta. They're the same. Cosine of beta is equal to the cosine of the opposite of beta. 
It is a relationship in trig. If you don't trust me, you can draw two triangles, one reference triangle in the first quadrant, one reference triangle in the second quadrant. Make those reference triangles the same, and you'll see. Sorry, that was first and fourth quadrant. First quadrant and fourth quadrant. Make the reference triangles the same. You'll see they'll have the same cosine. All right, however, if you take the sine of some angle, like let's say it's in the first quadrant, and you compare it to the sine of the same reference angle, but now negative beta, which would make it in, if it's less than 90, we would assume it's the fourth quadrant, um, you're gonna see that it has the opposite value of the sine of beta. So it's really like negative there. It's like having a negative. All right, so it's kind of like now that I have the minus sign, the opposite of the sign of beta. It's another relationship in trig. Okay, so it turns out that I've got a negative times a positive. That is going to be a negative quantity. So I get sine alpha cosine beta minus uh, cosine alpha sine beta. Boy, this is really choppy. All right, what does this mean? When there's a plus here, the relationship has a plus. When there's a minus here, the relationship has a plus. So whatever this sign is, this sign in the middle will always be the same. That's what we have learned now from that relationship. Let's see what happens here with cosine. Well, we're going to do the same deal. We're going to take and replace beta with the opposite of beta just to see what happens. Okay, so here I get cosine alpha, cosine opposite of beta. All right, here I get sine of alpha, sine, oops, that was supposed to be a beta here, wasn't it? I made a mistake there, didn't I? Let's get rid of that. I didn't copy the formula down right. Okay, so that should be a beta right there, oops. A beta. Why am I still on the eraser? There we go. Okay, so that should be a beta. So now this is going to be the sign of the opposite of beta. All right, now to clean this up, of course, we're gonna see the cosine alpha minus beta. And here I'm going to get the cosine. Oh, let's see, wait a minute. Cosine, we already found out that these two are the same. Cosine of beta, cosine of opposite of beta, they're the same. It's a relationship and trig. Easy to see. Uh, let's see, the sine of beta, the sine of the opposite of beta, they're actually going to be opposites of each other. The sine of the opposite of beta is like having the sine of beta, but it's opposite. So I'm going to really have, if I show all the detail, this is going to be sine of beta, but a negative here. So a negative times a negative gives us a positive. Okay, now this means that this formula is a bit different. It means, if I could get this out. Okay, so negative times a negative is a positive, so it's a positive sine alpha sine beta. Okay, what does it mean? It means that if this sign is positive, then the sign is negative. See how they're opposites? If this is negative, then this side is positive. They're always opposite of each other. And there you go. I have now proven, fully proven the whole relationship. It's taken a long time too. But anyway, there you have it. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our uh, interactive quizzes, our instructional videos, and our text-based lessons. Take care.